Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Rajni Sharma and today I am continuing with the complement system. In my last lecture of the complement system we already have discussed how complement system was discovered and what are the components in this complement system. And uh, we also have discussed uh, particularly about the complement system 1 which is very complex in structure. Now, from now, we will study about different pathways involved in the complement system. Actually, there are three pathways in the complement system. One is the classical pathway, another is the alternative pathway, and the last one is the lactin pathway. In this lecture, we will particularly focus about the classical pathway. So, let's begin. So, we have already know uh, that the uh, C1 or the complement system 1 is a very complex in structure. It consisting of a C1 Q unit and uh, it is like a, a, it have has a head like structure, lob lobular head like structure followed by a long tail known as stalk and it is also associated with two other components, sub components of the C1. Uh, that is the two component of the C1R and two component of the C1S. So we, we already have discussed about that. Now what happens when any pathogens enter inside our body, the pathogen surface consisting of certain antigens or epitopic site. So that epitopic site is been recognized by the paratopic site of the antibodies. And what was the requirement of the complement system? The first requirement of the complement system was that either complement, uh, sorry, immunoglobulin M or G should be activated. And if G is activated on that case, there is a requirement of multiple number of immunoglobulin G because the uh, condition is that that the two FC receptor of two, any two consecutive antibodies should be very close to each other so that the distance should be very less so that the C1 unit, C1Q unit of the complement system uh, uh, must bind to the FC receptors of the complement sorry, uh, antibody through their C1Q head region. So the most compatible was the immunoglobulin M because it exists in the pentameric form. But it is in the pentameric form only when it is bonded with any pathogens, not in a circulatory form. So after binding or after recognition of the epitope by the paratopic site of the antibody, what will happen? C1 or the complement system 1, 1 comes and binds to the FC receptor of the antibody. After that, binding of C1Q head region will cause certain conformational changes in C1R regions and this will become activated as a uh, activated uh, enzyme known as uh, serine protease. Activation of C1R will further activate the uh, S complement system or C1 uh, as complement system component of the C1 uh, complement system it will be activated and the smaller unit will be dissociated from the larger units. So what will happen after uh, after dissociation of the smaller units of the C1R and C1S so this back one is the R and the front R represented by the green is the S component so what will happen so C1Q first activated after binding with the antibody c1q has activated the r its r component so there are two r component both are r component will be activated similarly r component will activate the s component now s component has two different substrate c1 for sorry c4 and c2 are the are the substrate for the c1s so what will happen first c1 uh, as or the as component of the C1 will bind with the C4 unit of the complement system. C4 unit actually consisting of three different chains alpha, beta and gamma of which alpha belongs to the N terminal where gamma will toward the C terminal. So what will happen when the C4 component will come and bind with the C1 as then it lead to the dissociation of the C1, uh, C4 component into two half. The smaller one will remain attached with the uh, C1S while 
the bigger component will become activated now after that what will happen the c1s which is present nearby this already uh, activated c1s will now bind with the second complement system c2 and again what will happen there will be the uh, dissociation of bigger component from the, the smaller component so we already have discussed that uh, that mostly uh, when any complement system are released just like that of the proenzyme it will uh, it will remain inactivated until unless it is not activated now when the smaller unit got uh, got uh, dissociated from the bigger unit the bigger unit got activated and it will combine together with the c4 component after combining with the c4 component c2 along with the c4 component is termed as c3 convertase now this c3 convertase will act on the c3 component of the complement system and again what will happen again here also the larger com uh, component will be dissociated and uh, the smaller component of c3 will remain circulating inside our body and the smaller component of the c3 help in uh, activating other immunological responses like uh, phagocytosis inflammation and many more now after activation of the c3 component what happened it will create a cascade mechanism in such a way that very large amount of c3b will be activated so in my last video i have said told you that uh, each and every complement uh, complement system has two unit one is the larger subunit and one is the smaller subunit also uh, all the larger units are represented by a small letter b where the smaller uh, unit is represented by the small letter a only the exception lies with the complement system too so what we have seen all the bigger component is now activated up to c3 component now when this c3b is activated some of the c3b will come and combine with the already synthesized c2 uh, c4 for b the whole component this is termed as c4b where the smaller one is the c4a component so c4b and a letter on c2 will combine together to form the c3 convertase now when this 3b will come and combine with this already synthesized activated component then this will form the c5 convertase so this will become the c5 converted so just like the c3 converted what will happen now this time c5 converted will be able to activate the complement system 5 by dissociating the smaller unit of the complement system 5 from its bigger unit now unlike the uh, mechanism which has happened till now what will happen C5B will go and insert itself somewhere in the, the C5 convertase uh, on activating the C5B. This C5B will go and insert itself to on the surface of the uh, bacterium. So let's see uh, very close. I better I eliminate all these components so that the visualization will become more clear. So what will happen? The C5B will go and insert on the plasma membrane of the uh, pathogen now what will happen uh, if um, you might be knowing that the plasma membrane is consisting of the phospholipids and it is consisting of a of a head which is hydrophilic in nature and the tail region you can see here some of the tail is being shown here so that tail is the hydrophobic in nature so C5B is only uh, able to bind with the hydrophilic component of the phospholipids. Now when it will bind to the phospholipid layer, it will invite the binding of another component of the complement system C6, which in turn activate the binding of C7 component. Up to here what we have seen that only the hydrophobic region were engaged in the phospholipid but as soon as the seven component complement system seven has come and binded with it then what will happen this binding will create a uh, changes in the conformation of the plasma membrane and it will lead to the hydrophobic amphiphilic switching 
that means it will lead to the expose of the inner membrane of the plasma membrane so it will be oriented in such a way that it will sift the plasma membrane as a surface so that the hydrophilic uh, philic uh, component which will which are just below the hydro sorry hydrophobic component which is the tail of the phospholipids will be exposed out so at this point what happens this will determine whether the complement system has bonded to a proper pathogenic pathogenic cells or not if it is not bonded with the pathogenic surface then what will happen this component complement system which has bonded to the cell membrane c5 c6 and c7 will switch itself from this pathogenic or, or non-pathogenic surface toward the nearby cells so whatever the cell will be present there and it will be inserted to the nearby cells and this will cause the lysis of these cells so uh, this is just the regulatory process uh, so that uh, proper binding uh, or the proper uh, complement system should bind only to the pathogenic component but it is very rare phenomenon mostly the complement system bind with the with the proper pathogenic surface now after that what will happen when c7 has bonded to the previously inserted c5 and c6 component and it has exposed the hydrophilic hydrophobic uh, tail region of the phospholipid now what will happen c8 component will bind in such a way that a small pore is created so a small pore of approximately 10 armstrong is created which is not sufficient to kill the pathogens but if it is uh, this complement system will bind on the rbc's membrane which is not having nucleus on that case this 10 armstrong pore size is enough to kill or to lyse that cell now what will happen uh, finally the last component of the complement system which is c9 so c after binding with c8 c9 will come uh, here i have represented only few of the c9 only three you can see but in fact from 10 to 17 different components of the c9 can bind uh, in such a way uh, that hole is created so when you will uh, look from the top region then how it will look like it will look like that uh, some hole is created so this is representing uh, this is representing c5 c6 region is here c7 c8 so here again uh, the number i have reduced the number of c9 component but in fact it will be and the number will vary from 10 to 17 c9 component will come and it will bind in such a way that a, that a pore will be created so what will happen when a pore will be created on any cell surface so definitely the liquid which is nearby including ions and water molecules will rush inside and will enter inside the cell when more amount of liquid is uh, liquid get enter inside the cell then what will happen the cell will rupture or it will undergo lysis because of the osmotic stress so in this way the complement system helps to fight against the pathogens and these are the whole uh, mechanism of classical pathway this now after when the water has rust inside the cell membrane has lysed so each and every component will be brusted or the cell will be brusted so what will happen the cell membrane will be dispersed in the uh, in the extracellular matrices now uh, let us see what are the overview of the classical pathway so what we have seen uh, so sometimes it become difficult for the students to remember that which component has first come and which has which is to the to be next to bind with the complement system so i have a story for this so that you can remember the sequence very simple story there was a queen i'm not good in drawing so i hope you will understand that this is a crown there was a queen who was having a very beautiful necklace so what does queen q queen q stand for the queen but this beautiful necklace got uh, robbed by the by some robber and uh, so when he she realized she said said to his shoulder that go and find out my necklace go all in uh, go in all the four directions so you know and uh, there will be four directions I, even if possible go and find on the roof and toward the basement so both the direction on the upper direction and the lower direction also and go and find out my necklace 
so that I can I can reward you. So though uh, there was C C four and C two, and and the queen was having only three shoulder. So what was the problem that that how she can send its three shoulder in all the four directions? So because of that he hired some more shoulder. So he had more five shoulder and finally find out the necklace. So just re to remember this very small story was there. So um, what we have seen uh, in the previous animated in animated series that C one Q is first activated, which has uh, uh, bring about the conformational changes in C one R, and finally C one R has activated C one Q when the antigen and antibody component was there. So after activation, so through this bar we represent that this component is activated. This uh, so what was after that the S was having two component. One is the C four and another was the C two. So first C four come and bind with the or activated by the S component, and it changed into four uh, C four B and C four A. C four A will be involved in further immunological response, which we will discuss in our next lecture, and. Uh, C2 is also activated and uh, the bigger component here is uh, C2A when C4B and C2A has combined together they have formed the C3 convertase. C3 convertase is now able to activate the C3 component. C3 component when activated some of the components some of the bigger component of C3 which is the C3B will come and bind to the pre-existing C3 convertase and now it will be converted into C5 convertase. After that it will activate the C5 convertase which will then form when uh, then form the membrane attacking complex. Actually after the formation of C5P, C6, 7, 8 and 9 component which has come and associated to form a hole over the surface of the pathogen that all uh, all the component are, are together known as the membrane attacking complex. So these were all about the classical pathway. So don't forget to subscribe and share my channel because in next we will be discussing about the alternating and latching pathway. Uh, th both of them are almost similar to the uh, classical pathway only the initiating factor will be the different. So hope you all are doing well in this uh, lockdown. Don't forget to subscribe and share my, my channel. Stay at home, stay safe.